What in the bluest of blue brand fox was this? You should know that this was coming, obviously, because last week's SmackDown was fantastic. It was great. It was reminiscent of when wrestling used to be great on a somewhat consistent basis. You don't get that feeling much anymore. But last week's SmackDown was fantastic. And it's like we're right back to the blue brand BS all over again. Still better than Raw because God knows anything's got to be. But this was a brutally bad show. And I had hopes for it. As he's starting off with the tribal chief and he's coming down in his majesty and splendor. He's coming with his boys, the Usos. They're rocking those slick looking bloodline shirts. I'm like, okay, at least this is going to start off well. I'm going to get my fix of the tribal chief early. And if I start tuning out on the show and not caring, so be it. Um, but it's just, it's just basically to have an entrance so that way very quickly Big E could randomly come out and interrupt everybody to celebrate as he's the new WWE champion. So then that way Finn Balor could come out and make an appearance because why would we have Brock Lesnar come? We're just going to have Roman do business with Finn Balor at Extreme Rules. So that way we could set up a fucking tag match here with the damn Usos. Is Teddy Long there? Let me holler at you, player. It was all downhill from here. This show sucked. Finn Balor and Big E versus the Usos, you know, seem very, very random in a lot of ways, but yeah, I get that you're bringing Big E over because you're teasing like, hey, he's the champion now. He might have the belt at Survivor Series. And if you're keeping form with the tradition, it's going to be Big E versus potentially Roman Reigns as the main event at Survivor Series. I get one to build up to that and actually appreciate the elements potentially of a little bit of a long-term, long-term build. Love it. Also understand that you are immediately going to have a six-man tag, throwing Roman into the mix and so forth, come up on Monday night's Raw, trying to entice some of us to watch Raw. And I don't know if it's going to work. Certainly I'm watching three hours of that bullshit. But if the Tribal Chief's going to be on there, I might be tempted to check out at least that segment. But yeah, you knew this match was going to, Last a little while, go up until about 8.30 Eastern, and then Finn Balor and Big E were going to win, and that's exactly what the hell happened. <laughs> Probably the funniest thing of the night is Roman Reigns wanted answers, and basically Paul Heyman, it sounded like to me, said that he was Brock Lesnar's beard. <laughs> if you look at Brock's gear, that makes a lot of sense. And what really all Roman wants to know is... If that check that Paul Heyman wrote him, was it going to bounce or not? The joke is bad. I get it. Because this show was bad. Sometimes my energy level matches the show. This was fucking stupid. Rick Boogs versus Robert Roode. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. I was so disinterested in this show, even by this point, that I didn't even tweet that. I feel like I've let everybody down and my apologies for it. But it's a quick match, and then you get a post-match attack by uh, Apollo Crews or whatever the fuck dude's name is. Is it Commander Aziz? Uh, who, who gives a shit? Because he's laid. they've laid out Nakamura, and Nakamura is the IC champion. So, uh, who gives a crap? That sucked. How do you remember, though? It hadn't been that long. Might feel like forever and a day ago. You remember when we were really getting behind Baron Corbin? And he was one of the most interesting things on this show. He was one of the most interesting things in WWE, I would argue. You know, based off of some of the social media interactions and so forth, I think it supports it. Like, he was one of the most interesting things in wrestling. Like, this was a chance to do something different. This was a chance to do something unique. This was a chance to make Baron Corbin legitimately, for the first time ever, like, really interesting, compelling, must-see TV. Well, you can forget them all, all that shit. Goodbye, broke Baron Corbin. Hello, happy Corbin. Yeah, the good times are gone. It's supposed to be a match between him and Kevin Owens. And of course, he comes from behind and attacks Kevin Owens. So the match doesn't happen. Like, why do they do this? 
even if it's not part of the plan. Like, why do you fuck shit up that you even put on a silver platter for yourself? I don't know what the answer is, but still. You needed Baron Corbin to be what Baron Corbin was. You didn't need him to be this. You did all that shit so that way he could fucking have a hat and you could change his name and gimmick? That's stupid! As soon as I saw him, I had no interest. Where a couple of weeks ago, when I saw Baron Corbin, bum-ass, broke Baron Corbin, I was every bit, and I mean this legitimately, every bit as captivated as when the tribal chief comes on TV. And I know I'm not the only one, and you guys know it's true. And now, back to irrelevancy. Way to go, idiots! The Seth Rollins promo about Edge and on Edge was about what I would expect out of Seth Rollins. I mean, it, what, you know, no. As usual, I think his voice is cringy, and as a guy with a cringy voice takes one to no one, pot, meat, kettle, all of that is true. Yeah, his is kind of grating and nasally, and it's just weird. Uh, but it, this one was good. This one was good, especially for Seth Rollins. Um, like the fact that he's issuing a challenge for another match, being a little more aggressive. Like, he's got a point to prove still. He wants to make something happen. So, it was okay. This show needed a lot more than okay, but the way this night went, this was about the best you were going to fucking get. All that big deal about Zelina Vega to do this. All that big deal about Tony Storm and bringing her up and then not doing fucking shit with her, which makes absolutely no goddamn sense. So they must have looked at it and said, you know what? That's right. Divas tag action. Let's do some bullshit, which leads to a quick count out finish because Carmella's nose is broken, which then leads to Liv Morgan challenging Carmella to a match at fucking extreme rules that nobody wants to see, do they? God, this was cringy. God, this was bad. God, how in the hell is this the best you could do? Was this literally just because you felt stupid about Zelina Vega not having a match on last week's show, the 9-11 show, or the, like, 9-11 anniversary show, and you wanted to give her a spot here, give her a makeup match? Mm. And now she's playing, like, hype girl to Carmella? That's crazy. The Street Profits cut a quick backstage interview or promo, whatever the hell you want to call it, and they said they want the Uso smoke. All right. Careful trying to catch too much of Jimmy smoke. I'm just saying. It's got to be some type of contact poisoning if you do. I actually thought, foolish me. I actually thought they were actually going to bother to try to explain what the demon is about. Try to explain what is so different or unique for him and Finn Balor. Like the dichotomy of split personalities or anything like that. And instead, the explanation is about as fucking dumb as I should have expected. Like, the demon body paint is fantastic. It is one of the coolest things in professional wrestling. One of the coolest things in WWE. Combining that with Finn Balor's entrance, like, that is theater. That is what WWE is supposed to be. That's what sports entertainment is supposed to be. But then, once you get past the entrance and the fantastic fucking body paint when he's a demon, those are two things Finn's got going for him. It's two more things than a lot of other people in wrestling have going for him. I'll grant you. But, after that, nothing. And I'm sorry. Like, just putting on the body paint isn't good enough. The demon should act different. He should be different. There should be some type of explanation going to a different place, and you don't get any of that. Like, it just feels really lazy. Is all it is. It's weird. I'm kind of digging, though, I gotta say, the, the Little League, the Little League dad, the AAU dad, Rey Mysterio. Now, in an ideal world, I'd love to see him turn heel on this shit. Be like, I'm going to teach my son Dominic a lesson. This hard-headed motherfucker don't listen. Maybe Ray should be going to the tribal chief and asking for some advice about how to get his son in line. Because Dominic don't want him to listen. He want to be hard-headed. But you know where they're going with this? 
Dominic's going to turn on Ray. Like I said, it'd be awesome if Ray turned on Dominic. But I actually bought this. This is one of the few interesting things on this show. Was Ray sitting there and acting like he knew better? Because in you know, all intents and purposes, he does know better. That's believable. Sitting there and watching his son doing what he's done for two and a half plus decades, Ray is going to sit there and be overbearing. He's going to be overprotective. He's going to be sticking his nose into his son's damn business. And I could get with that. Like, that made sense. Feel like they should have already had their big blow off match at SummerSlam, but, you know, better late than never, I suppose. And I just wonder for Naomi. Like, she does deserve better. It's one of those things that you can't always get what you want. Fine. Totally agree. Not all of your favorites can always be pushed in the biggest spots. Fine. Also agree. Your favorites can't always be the biggest or the best. They can't win every fucking thing. And again, I certainly agree with that. But this, this, this is a gigantic waste of time and a gigantic waste of fucking talent. Hashtag Naomi deserves better has trended before for a reason. Because you look at bullshit like this and you say, why in the hell are they featuring her like this. Why are they choosing this as a way to utilize her? This is the type of bullshit you do with Natalia. Have we gotten to that point where Naomi is on the Natalia spectrum? What's next? You're going to sit there and have fucking Na Naomi? I almost called her Natalia. You see how it's fucking going? She's going to start having her fart? So to be clear, you had a basically a Divas tag match that probably lasted, what, two, two and a half minutes? It was fucking pointless. But we're intentionally choosing to not do something with Naomi that actually has her on television in a match in the ring. Fucking horrendous. But nothing, and there were bad things on the show, they might argue were worse, but to me, nothing was worse than the main event, Bianca Belair's homecoming. Oh my God. Hey, it's Mayor Glenn Jacobs. It's Kane. It's gotta be Kane. Hey, he's coming out mayor of what, Knoxville County, whatever. And you got Bianca, the hometown girl. They're having a celebration for her. It's a homecoming after all. And he's giving her the key to the county. Like, cool. You knew based off of what happened early in the night when Becky Lynch says she's never been to a homecoming. Um, probably because nobody asked. Uh, that she went and brought herself out. Now you're in Bianca Belair's hometown. You could create a good moment here and you could sit there and say, hey, we want Bianca to get some shine. You've got a table set up here. Why don't we have Becky go through the table? She got one over on Bianca, technically more than one. Let's get one over on Becky now. Did they do that? No. The whole shake hand spot thing to Bianca trying to rough her up only for Becky Lynch, of course, hitting you with some of that booby club business. Going to sit there and fucking hit her with the manhandle slam with that whack-ass rock bottom rip-off looking motherfucking move. I can picture Vince McMahon now. Yeah, listen to that. Listen to that heat. They're pissed. That's such good shit. He intentionally seeks out to troll <laughs> The towns of the talents when they're when they're in their hometowns. He just he wants to troll everybody, and I don't fucking get it. And and personally, I would say this also didn't work because yes, the booze for Becky were kind of big, blah 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 blah. But you could have done a lot more to really get some heat here. If Becky Lynch wasn't going to go through the fucking table, then you go the entire different dynamic, and you have Becky Lynch destroy the shit out of Bianca. And instead, they did a weak ass manhandle slam that Bianca kind of fucking no sold and Becky Lynch walks off. Like that finish was shit. That main event segment was shit. This week's Smackdown was primarily shit. How do you go one week ago and do that great show and come back this week and this is the best you fucking got? Is it really that hard to care week over week? 
Sure seems that fucking way, because it's hard as a fan to care about, because this was shit. 